Yeah, well, it's, it's one of the goals for sure. And uh, yeah, it's it's been, I guess, a little bit of a while since I've been back here last in 2020. So uh, happy to be back. It's um, I like the climate. I like I like when it's warm, especially when you, when you're jumping at night and it's not too much sun. It's just nice, warm, humid weather, which I'm I'm very used to from from where I grew up in Louisiana. So uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm very excited to be here. And um, yeah, I mean, meeting record. That's 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 definitely one of the goals. You know, it's 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 also nice to have a little bit of a training period leading uh, leading up to your um, leading up to the the big competition like the World Championships. Make sure I'm physically everything's there, and so I've had a nice string of meets thus far in the beginning of this outdoor season. And uh, you know, I, I feel like technically and I technically and you know the the feeling with the pole and you know the rhythm on the runway. I think I'm just about where I want to be at, at this point in the season. So uh, yeah, I mean, as far as you know, the little bit of the break, I guess you could say those four weeks before the World Champs, that's more just physically preparing and trying to get as, you know, touch up on everything, try to get as fast and strong as I possibly can and make sure I'm in as, as good a shape as I possibly can be this year um, yeah, for Budapest. Memories here, and uh, I, I know that it's a, a really good place to jump, and I know that it's a place that I, I can jump high. So, uh, yeah, I just, you know, we've got to go out there tomorrow and just do it. Usually we have pretty still wins here, and so for, for us pole vultures, that's, that's a that's a very big thing that we always have to be watching, and you know that that's very difficult to deal with. I think it's probably the most challenging variable that we, that we can't control is is the wind and trying to run against the wind or run with the wind or whatever it may be. So uh, for the most part, the times that I have jumped here, it's been as still of wind as you can possibly have, pretty much in, in inside of a stadium. So uh, and I think that also is probably partly the the way it's built. So um, no, I mean it's. That, that's that's great for us pole vultures because we know that every time we go down on the runway, it's going to be a, it's going to be consistent, and so it's a lot easier to find the rhythm and feeling on the runway. So, um, yeah, no, I mean as far as as far as the setup, uh, there's really no complaints. Yeah, t tomorrow I think that, you know, in the back of my head, I I will know that this is the last competition leading up to the World Champs. So I think there is that little bit of added sense of pressure that I'll probably put in all myself just because I. I want to make sure that I have everything right, and I want to make sure that I'm that I'm in the right place building up to the to the World Championships. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just I'm gonna try to go out there and try to try to you know get get a sense of 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 where I'm at. I think I have a pretty good idea of that already, but you know, just try to. So it's it's always nice to get some some extra reassurance on the track to as far as the the rhythm of the run and what poles to jump on because you know that can be yeah that. that those are decisions that you have to make when it comes down to it of, of where to jump with your standards, what pole to jump on, where to grip, where to run from, and, and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, I guess tomorrow's the last time of, of trying to collect all those, all that data and uh, just try to jump high, for sure. Um, but I would, I would really like to do it. I would really like to do it, and I, and I think that he's pretty keen, too, also. So, um, no, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, think that it's, I think that it's very possible. I think that... You know, especially our two personalities. I think we we like a good challenge, and we like something a little bit out of our comfort zone too. So uh, for him, I know it's been a very long time since he ran 100, and the same with me, basically. So uh, we both also just want to do it just for the fun of doing another event because we don't really get to to do that because we're so focused on trying to be the best in you know our respective event that we do now. So uh, yeah, I would I would really like to I would really like to race Karsten. I'm not saying that. I, that would that would be very easy for me, but I think that I would. Uh, I think I could get. Yeah, I think I can compete for sure. I mean, I hope that you don't peak physically at 23 years old, and uh, no, I don't. I don't think that's the case. And so I, I think that there's a lot of room to improve just physically, and uh, you know, I've I've put a real f focal point as as far as the the training of everything to try to get stronger and definitely try to get as as fast as I possibly can be on the runway. And I think that there's there is room for. There's room for improvement, and there's there's always room to get to get faster in, in that regard. I mean, I really haven't been doing that much of specific training in the, in the way that we're doing now for for all that long long of a time. So, um, no, I um, no, I, I mean, I, th I think that there's there's a ways to go. There's a ways to go, and I really haven't done anything too crazy. I haven't changed my my grip height in since 2018. Really, I've been I've been gripping basically the same height. I've just been using stiffer poles, so that's also maybe a, a, another step forward that I'm that I'm I could be able to take would be trying to grip a little bit higher. And um, you know, I think that if I'm if I'm able to have a little bit more speed into the takeoff, then that's very possible, which I which I think I will I will be able to do in the next the next coming years. 
So uh, no, I, I think there's there's all kind of stuff that I that I can do technically and physically that that's gonna you know get me to even even another level. Yeah, I mean I I know that it's yeah I definitely know that it's possible. I know that it's possible, and I and I think that I, I've been given that confidence from yeah just past past results and past jumps that some some of my world records that I've been able to do over over the 620 620s. So uh, yeah, I, I know that getting into the 630 is very possible. I know that it's gonna take something like a like a very perfect day, perfect conditions, perfect, perfect setup, and uh, you know I, I don't know if it's if I'm necessarily in in that kind of shape as far as you know this particular second, but I know that I'm not I'm not all that all that far away from that kind of thing. So uh, yeah, I mean I think I think it's always good to to try to have high goals and try to dream big. I think that's the only way you're going to be able to accomplish something big. So and. Uh... You know, we were supposed to have Rye here. He's not, but um, but it's always going to be a tough race here in Monaco. So, you know, I never I never cash in victories on on forehand. I know that it's going to be a tough job, but um, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it my all, and uh, and I think that's the only guarantee I can give. Whenever I step on the track, of course, I would run for a win, but hopefully the other guys will as well. That's why we race. Yeah, yeah yes, yes. Um, Alison. So gonna be my first race in the hurdles, as you say. So if you wanna be on one of the great athletes, we, you need to run with the great athlete. So he's the world hacker holder. So just come here and run with him. A good crowd, a good track. So it's just amazing, you know. It's a perfect time to come back to the track. I'm healthy. I'm ready to run fast, and just like go to the track and give my 100% tomorrow. Obviously, and it's you know, it's not just something that is going to happen. It it already happened, right? You know, Alison ran. Extremely fast times uh, for the last years. I did, Rai did. Um, also, a lot of people coming behind there. So, you know, there, there is a new era right now, and and things are going faster than than they did historically. And uh, you know, I just think we we should be happy to be here to enjoy it. And uh, hopefully, there's more to come. Uh, you know, I've already been fortunate enough to put some of those times already this year. So, so I think we're we're still working on it. So we are changing. The whole statistics and uh, and I'm proud of it. And I think also everybody is pushing each other. You know, when we are two or three guys going for it, you know, you have to push the limits every time, and that's how you become better as well. Just as Alison was was saying, you need to you need to push each other to to achieve greatness. He was asking who's the best chronometer hurdler in the world right now. <laughs> you go first. Oh, thank you. So kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's tough. Um, if you look at the papers, I have the quickest time, uh, but Allison hasn't run a 40 meter hurdles yet. It's going to be exciting to, to run against him now. Uh, Raya has been running quick in the US trials, so, you know, I think that's why people should really look forward to, to Budapest this year, because it's, it's quite an open competition, I would say. And, uh, He's from Norwegian media. He know I will never say that it's me um, because I like the legs doing the talking. So uh, we just have to wait and see. Well, I am in really good shape. I'm very fit right now. So I would hope that I run a great time. Um, that being said, I'm not looking to search for a world lead. We're not looking to search for that right now. Um, as Sharika said, the goal is Budapest and to be at your best for that. Um, but that being said, I, I'm very sharp and I'm very fit, so I feel good. Um, but really, I wanted to come to Monaco because, one, it's Monaco, and I love this meet, and who doesn't want to be here? Um, but, you know, the way athletes tackle a lot of races now are just preparing for these major championships, and that's kind of how it's become. Um, that being said, I'm also a little bit jet-lagged. I just got in yesterday, um, but I'm, I'm hoping to run really well. Um, I definitely don't think there is any firework com fireworks coming tomorrow, um, but I definitely want to put together a good 200 tomorrow. But I definitely don't think right now where training is at, I am at my best to say tomorrow is a world leading day or tomorrow I'll come and run 21.5. Definitely not, but as I said, it's leading up to Budapest, so the goal is Budapest, so that's where Coach and I are preparing for. Okay, you, you think more about the technique of your race uh, and not the, the performance? Yeah, definitely. I haven't run a lot of 200 this season. And um, depending on how coach say, okay, then I must run the 200. That's how I will definitely run the 200 tomorrow. So as I said, it's just to prepare me for Budapest. And I think the bigger picture is Budapest. So definitely. 
Yeah, well, last year we were really excited coming off of the Olympics, and I felt really good. And we were running against some amazing athletes, I mean, including Sharika. And I think we just did too much too soon, and I got injured in training. We were pushing it really hard to see how far I could go. Um, but ultimately, you know, we, we learned from that and realized that this year we need to have our priorities really straight and making sure that I'm healthy and having a chance to make the team. And then once you make the team, that's when you go for those medals. And so I feel really good, and we've been going about training well. We took this year really conservatively. Um, there have been a lot of moments in training when I've looked at my coach and said, are you sure? Like, can we do this? Can we do that? I want to push it. I want to move faster. Um, but she kind of had to reel me back this year and, and get ready. So now that I am really fit, now that I am really healthy, it's a good time to start pushing it um, and being ready for the medal in Budapest but just really happy to be healthy this year I mean mentally and emotionally I came after this year a lot differently because of that injury <laughs> um it's always different you know we come from different training um, groups all Jamaicans we come from different training groups so um, Shelly has run a lot less this year Elaine hasn't been at her best so I have as I said I have a different coach and we are taking each um, step at a time so I think coach like okay four races then back to training so I don't think I have a problem with it I'm okay I'm like competing <laughs> on the circuit by myself so I I got a citation uh, in French at Harvard and so that's kind of like our minor um, just because I loved the language and it was fun to speak and then I went to Dakar Senegal in the summer of 2017 um, I decided to stop running track for that, <laughs> that season and I went and studied abroad there for two months and they only speak French and so I got to really fine-tune the language a bit it's been about five years since then so I'm a little bit rusty but I, I can understand I think when people are speaking to me <laughs> but I'm gonna practice up for uh, Paris next year <laughs> <laughs> what I really love about um, school, I mean, I've graduated um, since, I've graduated two months ago, but I just love coming from track and coming from training and having something else to focus on and something else that I'm passionate about, and that for me was public health. Um, and it's just nice to like get just a break, something different uh, to break up your day. And then when I'm in school, I just can't wait to get back on the track and start training. So they kind of complement each other in that way. Um, since graduating, I mean, I have had a lot of free time, so <laughs> that was kind of good to get ready for trials and just have my mind focused on track. Uh, but moving forward, I'll be working at a healthcare clinic in Austin, so I think that'll be a good way to also break up the day with training. Um, before the championship, like the Jamaica championship, it was just to focus on the 100 because I had a buy for the 200. Um, so now we are trying to put together both of them. So it was the 100 before, but we are trying to put together both of them right now. Confidence right for you? Uh, <laughs> je ne sais pas. Um, <laughs> merci pour votre temps. Attention. Oui. Attention. <laughs> Bonne chance à moi. <laughs> Very good. Bravo. Bravo. <laughs> Thank you very much, Shanka Jackson and Gabriel Thomas. See you tomorrow on the track for the 200 meters. Uh, we've done we've done a bit. Um, I cleared a hurdle last week, so <laughs> yeah, it's it's still definitely something that we're doing, making sure that we're staying on top of, and um, you know, it's good just strength training in general. Uh, the hurdles is such a strength-based event that you know it definitely helps in the open four as well. So it's something that I continue to incorporate. Uh, I think for this year, you know. Being able to take a step away from the hurdles and work on just the flat speed was huge for us. Um, being able to get faster flat and then be able to come back and incorporate the hurdles, you know, just taking a step, taking a break away from it. Um, for us, I mean, this was a perfect year to try it, do it, and um, have some fun with it. Uh, I think for the Worlds, I mean, that's just what we've been doing all year. And, you know, we were like, let's just continue with it, see where it goes, see where we can progress to. I think we've continued to lower my time each each uh, meet we run, so that's been amazing, and hopefully we'll just continue to con do that um, all the way through Worlds and see what happens. So. I don't think it was a factor at all, actually. Um, I think for us it was more so just reaching out, branching out, seeing what we could do here, um, and continuing to progress so that when you know we do put the hurdles back in front, um, we know what, that the flat speed is there. Um, it just so happened that it is a world championship year, <laughs> you know, and, and that's kind of the major championship, and um, that's just kind of what we're working towards. So I, I don't think it was an initial thought. It's just kind of what happened. Uh, I would say the hurdles is, you know, it's a little more calculated in terms of you know how many steps you're taking, it's stride patterns, all of that is kind of figured out for you versus the 400 flat is just a sprint, uh, and you're just running for your life. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be there. Obviously, people want to see things that are exciting, and the sport wants, you know, to see 
one of the longest records fall, and that's an amazing thing. Um, but the reality is, yeah, I'm human. I'm still learning. Uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not a robot, so uh, I'm just as new to this as anybody would be. And I think I have to give myself grace. And um, you know, I think my team understands that this is new for us, that it's going to take time, and they are very different events. Um, even though people like to think this one would be easier, it's not. Um, and knowing that, you know, in time. I'll continue to get better, and that's when things will come. But for right now, um, I'm happy being uh, a student of the event. Um, it's so funny. My husband was laughing back there when you asked that question because um, it's true. He's the extrovert. But uh, I think for me, um, obviously, I want the sport to kind of have a sense of my personality and who I am. And I think, you know, obviously, social media is a great place to be able to do that. Um, but when I'm in the zone, when it comes to track, I'm very focused, and I don't like distractions or anything. There's other people who thrive in that, you know, kind of atmosphere. Um, but I think we've made a balance of, you know, even the YouTube we've started just being able to kind of show the behind the scenes so people can still see that, but it doesn't get in the way of the performance. And I think for me, that's the biggest thing. It's not that I don't like to show my personality. It's that I like to focus on what I'm here to do. Um, and so I think we found a great balance of that where we can do both and um, hopefully continue to kind of open up that shell as time progresses. Well, of course, it's um, great competition tomorrow, great gentlemen. Everybody's a star out there. Truly look up to everybody, especially when I was younger. Um, what you say, Andy, Zango, Pichada, everybody, I looked up to them. My coach would always be like, hey, look at them. This is what they do. Try to replicate it. Um, so overall, I'm just super excited to see um, what the competition is like at this level and just to get my groove on and enjoy myself here in Monaco. Yep. In general, young athletes uh, have some models. Um, which triple jumpers or athletes in general inspire you? I would say Pichardo. I, I like how humble he is and how technical he is in the phases. And just overall, he's tall and I want to be tall too, so, <laughs> yeah. Jaden said it's, it's something. It's definitely something. Um, from a country's standpoint, it's like absolutely amazing because Jamaica is known for his sprinting, not so much his jumping. So it's really great for us to come out here and lead the next generation of, like, say, just boys and girls sitting at home and just like coming out here and being role models for them. So it's just amazing. Well, the thing with Jamaicans that I really love is that they will encourage you. They will fight the battle with you and they will go into that venture with you. And that's what I really love about my country. It's such a village, in a sense, where everybody is just with you and they step out of the way. Even when I was at the Jamaican trials, I've never seen so much people come out to watch the jumps. In all my years, I've been doing track and just truly grateful for every single Jamaican supporting us, the field events. I guess it's not as competitive in the sense of, you know, you have like, um, probably eight lanes on the runway and eight people jump once, no, but people are coming out and supporting and I know they are rooting for us. Um, uh, when I heard, like, I was on the plane yesterday and my coach told me, no, not my coach, my agent said, like, oh, you have a press, con a press conference. I was like, are you talking to Julianne? Because I, I did not expect to be here, but it's definitely an honor. I, you can tell my hands are a little shaky. <laughs> but um, it's definitely great. I, this is a first experience, and it's been wonderful. Hey, I'm 18. I'm at the Diamond League, of course. <laughs> I'll be happy to... You know, share the word with everybody and to be here on the press conference. Like, I've been seeing this on television or on YouTube, and I'm like, ooh, Hibi, you can probably be there one day too. And I'm, I'm here, so just smiles and enjoying.